Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, and for some strange reason, the last few episodes up here, it's been a bit of a grey murky day on every occasion, and I'm afraid this is no exception to the rule. It's misty, it's cold, it's about zero degrees out here, my hands are freezing, and strangely, the name of this village has the word hot in it. It's anything but this morning. Welcome to the East Riding and to the parish of Hotham. Hotham is a small village and civil parish in the East Riding of Yorkshire, situated approximately 16 miles west of Hull, 21 miles southeast of York, and 4 miles south of Market Wheaton. The eastern end of the M62 motorway at Junction 38 is 2 miles southwest of Hotham, through the village of North Cave. According to the 2011 UK Census, Hotham Parish had a population of 233, a decrease on the 2001 figure of 256. The village has about a hundred houses. It doesn't have a great deal more than that. There's a pub, a church and a village hall, all of which we'll see in this video, but not a lot else. Other amenities are in the neighbouring villages of North Cave and South Cave. Clearly not used as one now. This house behind me here, that's schoolhouse. Hotham was once the land of Sir John Hotham, first baronet and governor of Hull, and his son, who was often referred to as Captain Hotham. Sir John Hotham was knighted by King James I and was a member of Parliament. The famous Siege of Hull by King Charles, which lasted for three weeks, has ties to this village through Sir John Hotham. In 1641, the Royalist army left an arsenal in Hull. Sir John Hotham was invested with the full authority of both Houses of Parliament to retain the arsenal regardless of circumstance. King Charles wrote to Sir John, informing him of his intentions to join his son James, Duke of York, who was residing in Hull. It was decided by majority vote that the gates of the city would be closed to the King. King Charles was furious and Sir John was dubbed as a traitor. Both he and Captain Hotham were executed. The estate was left to Captain Hotham's only son, also called John, who was aged 13 at the time. Like his grandfather, he would become an MP for the local town of Beverley and went into exile in 1684 after the exclusion crisis. The Hotham family's estate is now in the nearby village of South Dalton. By 1823, Hotham was a civil parish in the Wapentake of Hartill. The population at the time was 293, with occupations including nine farmers and yeomen, two shopkeepers, a shoemaker, a bricklayer, a blacksmith, a corn miller, a carpenter, and a tailor. A clockmaker also ran a village day school. A carrier operated between the village and Market Wheaton and Hull twice weekly. So as I make my way back up towards the north of the village, here's a little story. Before I came here, I made sure that I wasn't mispronouncing the name of this village because H-O-T-H-A-M you would think would be Hotham. And I originally thought it was Hotham, but I did ask a local before I came here just to make sure that that was correct. And it's not apparently, it is Hotham. Uh, although <laughs> uh, locals aren't always right, um, so um, that's the opinion of one local anyway, that it's Hotham. Um, so if it's wrong, please do let me know. It might even be Hotham, I don't know. But uh, Hotham is what I'm gonna go, go with, I think. Modern day Hotham looks a little bit like this. It covers 11.35 square kilometers and has a population density of just 16.35. That's because a lot of the area the parish covers is wide open farmland. Indeed, whilst I was here, I was passed on numerous occasions by farm vehicles. This is certainly a farming area. 
population has seen an interesting last 10 years. It's declined quite sharply by 2.5%. A lot of the residents here are over 65. That figure is well above 34%. Ethnically speaking, this is an area that's 96.6% white British. The average house here will set you back £736,000. It's a pricey one. Mind you, when you look around the place, you realise why this is a sought-after part of the East Riding. The Hotham Arms is the village's pub. This is a family-run pub and restaurant located in the centre of the village. They've been serving authentic and delicious food here for the past 20 years. The church is dedicated to St Oswald. It was designated a Grade 2 listed building in 1966 and is now recorded in the National Heritage List for England. This is Norman in origin, with a short west tower of the early 12th century and one early English window in the nave. The chancel was rebuilt between 1904 and 1905 by the Hull architect F.S. Broderick. Of particular note is the early 19th century extension on the north side of the nave built to house the squire's pew. An external door leads to a staircase to the first floor pew fitted out with comfortable seating and a fireplace. Well this church is really unique isn't it because look how wide this tower is and how short it is too. There's no spire it's definitely a flat top not even any battlements or parapets on top of it. It's a very unique church, short and stumpy I would call it, but it's still nice and it's unique and I think that's what uh, gives it a little bit of an attraction to be honest with you. Inside the church are six superb brightly coloured stained glass windows by the major Scottish artist Douglas Strachan, inserted between 1938 and 1945. Hotham Village Hall is situated a little ways out of the village. Indeed, to film this, I purposely drove to it rather than walked it. It's on the road towards North Cave. For landmarks today, we begin with the cemetery, which is opposite St Oswald's Church on the other side of the road. There's not really much to say about this one in truth, other than I found it to be a peaceful, calming oasis at the northern end of Hotham. A bus shelter isn't usually something we'd be calling notable, but this one sure is. It was completed in November 2001 as part of Hotham's commemoration of the second millennium. Okay, so in the bus shelter here, there's uh, a nice little information board here. And uh, there's something which we're gonna see later mentioned, the Hotham Millennium Avenue of Trees. And that, as you can see, is a tree-lined road. And to get to it, if you just look out of the bus shelter here and look to the left, it's along there. So later on, I'll be taking the car down there and we'll drive down the Millennium Avenue of Trees. There's some other good information on this board. I'll take a couple of shots of this. I'll see what I can use in the video. Also, over here, we have some bus information. Service 143 from Ferriby to Beverly is what calls here. The Avenue of Trees and this shelter are just two of the things that were done for the millennium. Somewhere in the village there's a time capsule buried and there was a village party which earned Hotham a Rural Development Award. This limestone obelisk, decorated with wreaths on all four sides of the base, lists the names of the World War I and World War II casualties right opposite the Hotham Arms in the centre of the village. To the south of Hotham you may come across this bench. Hotham Primitive Methodist Chapel is now a private residence. It was built in 1869 and was converted in 2009 to what it is today with an extension on each side of the main chapel building. So we're approaching the south of the village here and you can see this wall behind me. This is all part of Hotham Hall, uh, which we can't access obviously because it's a private residence. Um, and, uh, there is an interesting feature about it, which is something else we're not going to see on the main walk either, and that is the ice house. I do have a picture of that though, and you'll find that in today's picture bit. Hotham Hall was built for William Burton around 1720. The core, built of local limestone, is a two-story, five-bay, double-pile house with attics with a Westmoreland slate roof. 
Hotham Hall has 18th and early 19th century parkland associated with it, incorporating features originally part of the grounds of North Cave Manor House. At its greatest extent, the site covered some 85 hectares. Running through the village from north to south is the beautiful Hotham Beck, which is perfectly clear and has a small waterfall at the northern end of the village. I'll tell you what, some beautiful clear water here, isn't there? Look at this. I can virtually see my face in this. See right to the bottom. You pass over this twice on the route that I walked, which you can see at the end of the video. Hotham Beck runs for a total of 1.7 kilometers, splitting at points into different directions. And this might not look like anything in particular, but the trees here form the edge of the Hotham Meadow site of special scientific interest. There's a pond in there somewhere, surrounded by birch trees, and not too far away is another SSSI, Hotham Cars, which is close to neighbouring South Cliff. Okay, well I was going to take a perch, <coughs> excuse me, on this uh, bench, just to introduce the picture a bit, but it's a little bit wet. It's a bench which is here in memory of Alan Thomas Davy, who was the chairman of Hotham Parish Council from, I can't really read this, 1983 does that say? to 1990 i think that's 83 it's worn away a little bit yeah it's 83 it says he was a true countryman plenty of those out here in this part of the east riding okay time for a picture of it and uh plenty of things here in hotham that i couldn't film owing to them being private you'll find them here in today's picture bit Okay, to finish with then, we'll take the car uh, down the Millennium Avenue of Trees towards my next parish. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the parish of Hotham. It's not a very big one. It's a very nice one though. I imagine it's better in the summer when the sun's out and it's not misty and murky like it is today. I imagine the sun would make the church look absolutely spectacular. It would certainly make Hotham Beck look spectacular with that little waterfall we saw earlier, wouldn't it? And uh, some of the houses around here probably look nice in the sun too. But alas, it is what it is. It's a grey, misty, murky day. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Not really much I can do about the weather. This has been the parish of Hotham. And I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. And I'm out.